G'day, I'm Jared Blair and this is my nest. This here is our dartboard. This is where uh, all the big decisions of the house are made. Uh, if you get the uh, lowest score, you usually have to do all the work. So, I've ducked down the street to get an ice cream and um, it's not often that I'll lose. I'll probably get a bullseye here. So this here is the office. This is where all the important decisions are made. Um, I've used this printer probably three times since I've had it for the last two years, so that's been pretty handy. This one here is me and my uh, housemate ducked over to Luna Park. Had a go on the scenic railway, which is pretty exciting. So this is where you'll find me uh, most afternoons after training. I'm pretty lucky that I've got the hard drive plugged into the tally there with a couple of weeks worth of entertainment. Yeah, this is uh, my kitchen. It um, does the job, I suppose. It's it's, pre it's pretty nice. We've got a few of my favourite appliances over here. Uh, the old espresso coffee machine, which uh, wakes me up in the morning time, which is good. Yeah, this here is um, this is my bedroom. It's not the biggest room, but um, it's certainly adequate for a bloke of my size, which is good. Uh, this here is. My aircon. It's helped me survive through a few uh, a few summers now. Yeah, this is uh, this here is probably one of my favourite photos from my career so far. Uh, it's the 2010 Grand Final. A lot of excitement there. We got this fella here who didn't want to spill, spill his beer, and old mate down the front, uh, he's pretty happy with the goal. So yeah, I like to look at that. Through to the uh, bathroom now. This is where I was probably spend an hour each morning uh, grooming and getting ready for training. A lot of tough critics at the footy club, so you want to be looking your best when you get in there. All right, now follow me. I'll take you to uh, my favourite part of the, the house here. Yeah, so this is our little uh, rooftop terrace. We're pretty lucky we sort of get it to ourselves. It was, it was a stage two where we, uh, we got into gardening. This was last summer, but um, yeah, we got over that pretty quick. Yeah, this is the good old uh, down under Barbie from Barbecues Galore. Believe it or not, it, it does still work. Yeah, cook the odd roast here, but as you can tell, not too many. I'd love to stay up here all day with you guys, but uh, I better get to training. Yeah. Thanks for having a look through my nest. Well, he joins us on the show. Are you serious? I certainly am, Chris. <laughs> Uh, what about a bit of cleaning, mate? Did that, would that go astray at any stage? Well, Mum, uh, she still lives back in Montaggy and she doesn't get down to Melbourne too much, so I'm not a big fan of the cleaning myself. Now, uh, it's not, you wouldn't call it an expansive mansion, would you? No, no it's, it's certainly not the sort of pad that you'd see Pendles or, uh, or, or Swanee in, I wouldn't have thought. Now, tell us about your career, which has been brief, but seems like you've been around forever. 41 games, you've played in three grand finals. Do you consider yourself a bit of a veteran? <laughs> no, I definitely don't. Um, you know, it's been a, it's been a, a pretty good journey so far, and um, it sort of does feel like it was a while ago. You know, back in 2010. But no, it's it's been fun, and hopefully a lot longer to go. Do you, you're a young player coming through? Do you enjoy watching other young players emerge on the scene? We've seen a couple already this year. Yeah, you do. You know, as long as they're not taking your position, it's, <laughs> it is good to watch. You know, I sat, Sat back last week and I had the week off and, and got to watch Sinks play probably his best game for the club and uh, it's pretty exciting, you know, when blokes come up and are able to do their job and, and play good footy for the team. For everyone watching, what about other young players that perhaps we haven't seen yet at AFL level in the VFL? Yeah, well, um, I think young Jamie Elliott is, is a player to watch, you know, he, he's only been back in the VFL a couple of games and uh, he, he's been pretty good, you know, he's sort of a... Stephen Milne type, he's, uh, he's pretty good with the ball and, and pretty powerful through his legs. Now, you missed last week because of leg soreness. Yeah. You just rested, leg were soreness. you? Oh, I think I'm a bit too young to be rested. <laughs> uh, I, I copped a bit of a knock against the, the Dons on Anzac Day and, uh, and didn't quite get up, so I just had the week off. Yeah. So are you OK to go against Brisbane? Yeah, good to go. Trained uh, this afternoon and yeah, it'll be right this week. It's going to be another big challenge playing up there. Not always easy. No, well, I think, you know, we were sort of speaking to a few players who have been around Brisbane 
uh, it's it's a pretty big game for them, you know, and, and they really build themselves up for this one. So, yeah, we really expect a pretty tough match. Well, Essendon certainly accounted for the Lions last week. Let's hear from Ford coach Matty Lappin on about how the Bombers went about it. Oh, look, Essendon were terrific. Um, their start was amazing. Um, you know, they, they really uh, got Brisbane onto the back foot really early, and I think that'll be important for us if, you know, you go into state, you want to start really well and try and quieten the crowd as quickly as you can. So we'll need to start well, um, but you know they were able to get the game played on their terms, which was important, and and um, force Brisbane to chase them around a bit. Um, you know, so they've um, shown us a bit of a blueprint on how to do it. But um, obviously the game's going to be different being played at the Gabba rather than at uh, Etihad Stadium. So um, we'll have a good look at Brisbane during the week, make sure the players are well prepared, and um, we'll get up there and see if we can get the job done. I think interstate trips are really really good for this group. Uh, the the um, you know the track record is really positive. So. Uh, look, we're well aware that we're not um, firing on all cylinders. We, we've got plenty of work to do, um, but at the same time, we're four and two, and we're you know we're going into state and um, in a game into a game that we think you know we should win if we um, do everything the way we need it to be done. So uh, we're looking to get looking forward to get away, uh, get a couple of players back into the team as well. So um, it should be um, a good road trip for us. Now, Maddie mentioned about the road trip. Tell us about your experience. I mean, the club has got a magnificent record over recent seasons travelling. Uh, first of all, who do you share with? Who do you room with? Um, oh, I've sort of had a mixed bag over the last couple of years. You know, the last few times have been Steelo, which is it's good when you don't want to sleep, but it's no good when you do want to sleep because he, he doesn't like to go to bed sort of too much before 12, 1 o'clock. You know, I say to him, you know, are you going to go to bed? So he's like, oh, no, I'm not tired. So he sits up all night, but um, yeah, travelling, you know, it's, it's good, it gets all the boys together. Do you feel like it, it improves the bond? Yeah, I think so, you know, it's a sort of a mini footy trip without, without <laughs> anyone playing up, you know, it's, it's well, good to get away. Anyway. And, yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, uh, who do you try and avoid on these types of trips? I mean, who's the person you just don't want to get caught rooming with? Uh, I'd, I'd probably say Pendles, you know, he's pretty uh, pedantic and very specific about his preparation and, and you wouldn't want to be crossing him or... Uh, or Annoying him, you know. Now, Sunday, of course, is Mother's Day. You're playing Saturday night. So what have you got in store for Mum? You're going to be late back. Have you got something special on the cards? Yeah, well, I uh, requested an early flight to get back to, to, to see Mum, but it was knocked back. So <laughs> uh, I think we'll have lunch at Nana's on uh, Sunday, Arvo. Yeah, and be good. That's it? What special gifts for Mum? She'll be watching. No, I don't want to give it away. Oh, it's yeah, it's too be much right. in store. <laughs> Keep it a surprise. Well, mate, good luck. It's going to be a big challenge, of course. Always hard to play away from home, but good luck and great to see you back in the team. Thanks, Chris. After the break, Chief Executive Gary Pert's going to join us. But first, let's hear from Nick Maxwell at a very interesting location. I'm here at the opening of the new Sharon factory. Now, all footy fans out there will know exactly what this is. You watch us play with it every weekend. Sharon is an iconic brand in the AFL industry. We know it's a big brand with Collingwood as well. So let's go check out exactly how they're made. First of all, the Australian cattle hides come in here either dyed in red or yellow, obviously for a day game or a night game. From there, this is taken across, cut here on the machines, very sharp, so I'm gonna make sure I don't hold the wrong end of that. So here's the cut panel, and from here, we're gonna glue the canvas on to make sure that the leather doesn't stretch. It's pretty simple here. Foil stamp the logo onto the football. Here the panels are stitched together by hand, obviously inside out. Later on, we'll turn them in the right way. Here the boys are putting the bladders in and then obviously lacing up the balls. So the final lacing's going on here, and then obviously we've got the Sheridan football all finished. So next time you're out there kicking one, think about all the hard work that goes on behind the scenes. <laughs>